So here we are, 30,000 miles. I wanna to talk to you guys about the longer term review of the Van Compass suspension, how that's working out through multiple seasons, uh, a bunch of highway miles, a bunch of off-road miles, some, some really, really challenging, you know, four low uh, miles. So I've really, uh, I've really beat this thing up, so to speak and i'm super happy and and proud of, of what it's capable of uh and nothing nothing too major in terms of modification really so i threw the the van compass falcons on here as you can see i've got the adjustability um so i run you know the the third setting most of the time just because i like it stiff and and i'm in, in and out of town getting in and out of town so i'm doing some highway, highway miles um the the second setting which is where you get all of your adjustability and customization uh with a 7100 pound vehicle i'm running in uh two 2.2 and that seems to be the sweet spot for me uh, I've played around with that a bunch. I've, I've driven it stiffer and I've, I've driven it softer and that's that's about where I like it. If, if I really load the van up and I know I'm, I'm you know closer to an 8,000 pound vehicle, which is very rare for me, then I might, I might stiffen that up if I'm on the, on the second setting. But for the most part, uh, I'll run three, which is the stiffest, just on highways, getting in and out of town. And then I'll switch straight to one when I go off-road. And I've been doing some, some pretty intense off-roading. I've actually surprised myself with the capabilities of this van. So uh, with that, incredibly happy with the suspension. And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the wheels and the tires because this has been a popular topic. And a lot of people, I think, have, have struggled to figure out what, what's the you know, what's, what's the balance and, and how far you can go without making major modification. So I've, I'm running the BFG's uh, AT KO2s and I've got the LT23570 R17s. That's on a black Rhino, uh, I believe these are the Yellowstones and the offset on that is um, about negative 39, I think it is. So with that, there's no rubbing whatsoever. Now, I will say that straight off the, straight off the bat, I, I did make some, some modification and I trimmed that fender. I think Agile Off-Road and Van Compass make several kits there. So um, took me a while to figure all this out. Hopefully that provides some value for you. I wanna go inside the van a little bit and talk to you about Adventure Wagon, because I had, um, some some criticisms and also some some bragging points with these guys i've been super super happy with the adventure wagon kit before we step into the van i've got a i've got to call my buddy dutch out with uh the bug wall he makes by far the best bug screen and he does it in a bunch of different configurations you can order whatever you want not only is this, is this guy like a great guy and entertaining, but his product is phenomenal and it's not the most expensive out there. So um, Dutch, good job. For those of you wondering if you should get the bug screen, it's a no brainer, uh, super easy to install, really durable. I've had my kids like hanging on this thing and it hasn't pulled out like I thought it would. Uh, so really good product there. So step, stepping into this thing, uh, one point of criticism I had with Adventure Wagon was uh, this B pillar right here has a, a piece that was a little bit too long for the 2020 and 2021 model sprinters. And I installed it it didn't work out well i was getting like a really big gap right in here uh and what i can say is they definitely followed up they told me that they were re-engineering the piece to fit better and not push out this b pillar so much 
And sure enough, they mailed me, uh, after uh, a quick follow-up call, they mailed me a new piece and it fits like a glove. So super happy. I want to make a, a special point out to Adventure Wagon and just say you guys are well done. As always, uh, nothing is ever perfect, but customer service, you guys are knocking it out of the park. So thank you. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions historically on my power system. I chose the Goal Zero 1500X and a lot of people were saying, you know, that's not possible. It's too small. Um, it doesn't charge with the alternator, all of these things. Um, I haven't had those experiences. Uh, I can't speak for exactly how everybody else installs it. Uh, but I, I installed the Goal Zero 1500X as my auxiliary power for this van. And I haven't made any changes whatsoever. I did it exactly how Freedom Van Go explained it, which is the install kit that I bought. And it's been phenomenal. Um, I'm running for auxiliary, I'm running lights. I'm running an S-Bar D2 heater. Uh, I'm running this Dometic 45 uh, fridge cooler and uh, I've got several outlets and other things that I use for charging laptops and phones and you know all sorts of other things. So these things are used heavily you know over 30,000 miles and I've had zero issues. I've got on the top of the van I've got a, a hundred watt solar panel and that panel has been you know great at the trickle charge um, very seldom do I actually have to plug the van in, uh, plug the Goal Zero in to get it to charge. Uh, during the, the colder months where there's less sunlight, I'll run it and charge it off of the alternator, and there's been zero issues. Um, I've even talked to Mercedes about the battery health and the alternator health, and it's such a, a minimal charge and tops off the battery almost every time I drive it, at least, you know, for an hour. And so I've got no complaints whatso whatsoever running that. Um, I did relocate the Goal Zero. I put it up above a cubby that I have from Flatline, which has been nice. I, I Traditionally, I had it underneath the seat there, but I decided to pull that because the underneath seat space is perfect for um, bag storage. And, you know, after... 30,000 miles of usage and you know the family in here we take all the all the storage we can get so um, like a Dekine bag or your standard Patagonia black hole bag slides right under the bench seat um, so that's valuable space there so hopefully you guys uh, find that valuable and it helps you in, in your power consumption decisions um, a couple of other things that I wanted to point out here. I've done quite a bit of work for the sound system. It, it was an important investment for me. So I put uh, some, some Alpines in the back, some R-series Alpines, as well as in the front doors. And then I put an X-series Alpine amplifier. And all that stuff is stored underneath this shelf that I built, which sits on top of the flatline uh, cubby. And so I've got the S-Bar heater with a custom shelf built in there with the, with the amplifier. And then on top of that, I've got the Goal Zero there. So power-wise, no problems whatsoever. And um, I couldn't, couldn't recommend anything else. A little bit longer term review, which I think I've already covered in others, is the, the Adventure Wagon kit has just really been bomb-proof. Um, I've gone through and I've, I've maybe found a couple of bolts that have loosened up over time, but again, I've, I've beat the crap out of this thing. Uh, I've really off-roaded it like you would any other off-road truck. And so I expect as things torque and twist and, and, uh, shift bolts are always going to loosen. And I've been surprised, you know, the first time around, I found a few that loosened the second time around, I only found a couple and they're really, they're staying strong. So uh, structurally, the Adventure Wagon kit's holding up very nicely. Um, I still 
don't think Adventure Wagon talks enough about the technology in their panels, uh, the, the thermal properties, super, super valuable. Um, this thing is like a Yeti cooler inside uh, in the winter. I, I built this van thinking about the summer months and it turns out it's more fun in the winter months because it's just, it's just so warm. It's so capable in really cold weather. Um, of course, I, I, did, I, I did insulate this entire van with uh, Havelock wool insulation. But on top of that, the, the, just the simple panel technology from Adventure Wagon is, uh, is, is, is really good. So again, 30,000 miles. I'm not going to do another review on it. That's enough. And these guys, these guys nailed it. Durability wise, it's great. Um, I've got these back panels on here. They take a beating. They still look clean. They wipe down nicely. Um, you know, side, side panels. I've got gear in and out of here all the time. It takes a beating. It wipes down nicely. Same to be said with these flatline cubbies. I mean, I've had like you know, mountain bike pedals rubbing against this stuff. I've had gear in and out of this thing like crazy and it just, it just works really, really well. So kudos to those guys. So that's it. I could go on talking uh, forever about all the little stuff, but I really wanted to give everybody a, a good review of, you know, 30,000 miles. It's it's a bunch of hours. It's several seasons in and out of this van, um, biking, fishing, camping, uh, all, all sorts of stuff and really have, you know, taken care of it, but definitely beat it up. And everything that I've done here is holding up and uh, it's, it's hard to say what I would do differently. So with that, I hope this really helps you guys and uh, good luck in your van builds and your modifications and hope to see you out there. Cheers.